All right, I'd like to break up this topic of integrals into four different little mini lessons here. Uh, in the first part here, I'd like to show you a geometric representation of what an integral is calculating. In the second video, I want to show you how to evaluate an integral. Part three, I want to show you what the antiderivative is of an integral. And this is going to be very crucial if you have to calculate uh, integrals by hand. Uh, the numerical values. If you can't use a graphing calculator on this, uh, you're going to need to watch part three, which is the antiderivative that's crucial. And then part four is I'm going to show you how to find the area of an integral. Now, the area may be a different numerical answer than evaluate. So that's two different uh, concepts. You have to pay attention to the directions given in the problem. So first thing in this first video, uh, there's something called an, a, a definite integral, and all a definite integral is is it has what's called an upper bound and a lower bound. Okay, an indefinite integral will not have that; it will just be blank up here. Okay, so a definite integral has a specific that's called an upper bound and a lower bound. And notice what I've done is uh, this right here is just I started with something very simple. It's a linear equation has a y-intercept of 6 and a slope of negative 2, so down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Or if you just find the 0 or the root, you're going to see that that's a negative 3. Uh, this graph is not to scale, it's just to sketch to give you an idea of what's going on here. Now, simply put, what an integral is, is you're calculating the area underneath the curve but above the x-axis and it's trapped between 0 and 2 in this case. I just made up these numbers at random here. So even though the intercept is at negative 3, I'm going to chop a little portion here. I'm going to stop it at, that should be a positive 3, stop it at 2. So if you were to translate from calculus to geometry, this would mean that. You're calculating the area below this curve between 0 and 2 on the x-axis. So the upper and lower bound, that's lower bound, upper bound, okay? There's a little gap there. The area is only the yellow stuff, okay? Now notice I have the same exact function here and the same exact graph, but I'm calculating the area from 0 to 4. So I change the upper bound from a 2 to a 4, and this is what that would look like. So I have area above, and then notice it hits an interruption point. The three, that's where the graph goes from above sea level to below sea level. Okay, so I have a little yellow area above sea level and a purple area below sea level. Okay, that's all because the upper bound was changed from two to four, therefore I have to shade more area. Okay. So those are two linear equations. Let's do that again with a parabola here. Now this is factorable. x plus 2, x plus 4, which means that the roots are at negative 2 and at negative 4. And since the coefficient of x squared is positive, it's a happy face. Okay. And this graph is not to scale, it's just a sketch to give me a, a picture of what's going on here. So I don't know where the vertex is. The vertex can be way down here or even closer, I, I don't know. But I'm just really concerned with the x-intercepts because the negative 2 is an interruption uh, in this interval from negative 4 to 1. Notice that negative 2 is in the middle of that. So what we have here, from negative 4 to negative 2, it's below sea level, but from negative 2 to 1, it's above sea level. Okay? So I'm going to cover, color all the above sea level stuff in yellow. And the same is true for a sine curve. Okay? In this case, the upper bound is 2 pi, and this is 0. And if you're doing this with a graphing calculator, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. These are That's 2 pi radians, OK? So sine starts at the origin here. And you have a bubble above sea level. 
Now, since this is just a sketch, um, this doesn't do it justice, but both of these bubbles are equal in size. One is above sea level, one is below. The graph is symmetric. It's, uh, it's really the same thing there, OK? Now, just a little quick thing here. This, notice you see this dx here? That just means change of x. That is a notation in calculus, because calculus is the mathematics of change. And the, cha the uh, at least in this curve right here, in this one, where it's not linear, x is constantly changing. OK? Thanks.